Good morning, this is Layla Rao with the latest installment of our Leo 100 stories. My guest today is Gitta Kitgard, who is a caring agile coach and works in multiple countries. And she is incredibly creative and original in her thought process, so welcome. Thank you very much, I'm glad to be here. We're so glad to have you here. So as I mentioned, your creativity stands out to me. Can you talk more about how you got to where you are today? What's your journey been like? Yeah, so the interesting part was I didn't always see this journey. I thought I was going to work with computer networks. That was my big dream. Um, and I discovered Agile a little bit as I started working. Um, and in 2011, I went to the Agile Coach Camp in Germany. And for the first time in my life, I felt at home. I felt like this is a place I belong. This is a place where I'm not just accepted, I'm appreciated. And the quirky things that I've been told was wrong, like uh, wanting to help other people, uh, sharing. All of a sudden, I saw all these people with the same values. And that totally changed my life. So if you look at me before 11, I would never laugh out loud. I would wear gray, black. I would try to hide. And slowly, what, I, what happened to me was after realizing that I'm actually okay uh, and having the backup of the tribe, I started growing and becoming who uh, one of my friends, Alexei, says, it's not about changing, it's about becoming who you've always been. And like, if I look back, a lot of my values, even as childhood, was agile values. It's about thinking about what you do, reflecting. It's about helping other people. It's about supporting people. It's about doing the clever things. And basically, to me, this is what Agile is about. The most important tool we have is the retrospective or other ways of reflecting on things. The feedback loop, that's the most important thing, but also the care of people. And I think that's why the, the first part of the manifesto says people and interactions over processes and tools because we need people. And um, so that was kind of my journey into this. And slowly realizing that um, I'm also, um, I'm, I used to, I sometimes call myself a little bit crazy. Some people say you shouldn't do that, but in a good way, like I'm not, I never really fit it in. And it felt like there was something wrong with me because I didn't fit in. I had all these things that I was not supposed to. And what I realized in the agile community is that these things are actually a benefit. So I call it my hair blue just for the fun of it. But I also realized by coming into a team, for instance, and having blue hair, people see that I am who I am. And that makes them feel more comfortable and uh, it's easier for them to trust me. And also shakes them a little bit, which means that their brain is ready to take input. Um, I do meet prejudice sometimes, like uh, because I'm a woman, I probably don't know anything about IT. Uh, because I work with the soft things, uh, my focus is very much on helping people, on psychological safety, on creating motivation and teams. People sometimes underestimate me and think I don't know anything about technical stuff. Um, and I got really annoyed in the beginning, but I've also learned that if I can get them on the right path, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then on the other hand, sometimes it does matter. So like I was discussing uh, refactoring with someone and he was very rude and telling me how to, you know, I should, he has a book I should read. And I was almost about to tell him, you know what, I go to conferences with the people who write the books. So I just happened to be at a conference with Martin Fowler. So I asked him the same question. He's like, yeah, why wouldn't you do these things? And as I come back, I'm kind of like, do I need to tell him? No, I know right now that I was right. If I tell him, it will just prove my power to him. And that's not, that's not going to help him grow in any way. So I didn't tell him. I, I use the story sometimes to show, you know, how, um, how we can get underestimated just because of the way we look or the way we are. Um, so what I decided to do was kind of like, you know, figure out why did he have this need to prove that he was better than me. And what turned out was that he was the senior guy and all of these new young people came in with new knowledge from university and he was so afraid he wasn't relevant anymore. So he needed to prove himself. Um, and I think that often when we work with people, we need to put aside this ego to kind of show that we're good enough. And it's also the hardest part because sometimes you can see people do something you encouraged them to do six months ago. And 
you don't tell them that this is what you do. You just see them grow and, and other times you don't even see the results of what you do. Um, so my journey has just been trying these things out, uh, becoming independent and um, realizing that I love my freedom. I love that I can take time off. I love that I am the one who decides which conferences I go to. Um, so at the moment, I haven't had a um, steady client for eight months because I'm moving, sorting out old stuff, uh, moving, taking care of some people, speaking at conferences. Um, and I'm the only one who decides this. Um, and the Agile community kind of gave me a foundation to do this. They helped me see that it will be fine and something good will happen. And if I get in trouble, like if I can't get a job and I run out of money, I'll find something. Um, and there's just this huge support in the community um, that I find anywhere almost. I want to pick up on one comment that you said, because I don't think I've ever heard it expressed that way. That being authentic ourselves generates psychological safety for other people. Yeah. Because authenticity is so compelling. And perhaps if we are modeling authenticity, other people will also feel safe enough to be their true selves. And that's a very organic way of building safety that I have not heard expressed before. And so I was actually looking at the TED talk from Amy Edmondson about psychological safety. And one of the things she talks about you can do as a leader is to show that you make mistakes. And I think this authenticity and, and vulnerability about, you know what, I am who I am and I make mistakes. Um, and when I started out in Agile, I thought it was horrible. I mean, when I started out as an Agile coach and the team didn't do the things I wanted them to do, I realized that, oh, I need to take that step back because all of a sudden it's not my team. I'm not part of a team. I'm helping a team. And that really hurt me, that kind of like, but I also use it now to kind of say, you know what, I made a big mistake then because I cared too much and I was not able to take that step back from my care. Um, and I think that, you know, telling about your mistakes, but also about your dreams and your wishes and being that authentic self allows people to kind of get more peace in I'm okay as I am. And it's not like everyone just becomes authentic just because you are, but it creates a baseline that helps you uh, create that trust and talking to people. There's a story that I will never forget from my experience. I was doing a retrospective and a woman came to me afterwards and said, she's practically in tears, saying that no one's ever told her she was good at something. Yeah. And so often, I think we forget as agile coaches, we do have an incredible position where we can help people feel safe, help them feel like they can be authentic, that we can provide that space. So thank you for that. That's an incredibly powerful lesson. I wanted to tie into your comment about the community, the Agile community, and that you found both a home here as well as so much support. Can you talk about what do you think makes this community so different? Well, so my first encounter with, with the international community was in Germany. And since then, I've been to coach camps in Canada, in Netherlands. I've been to the ones in Denmark, which, strangely enough, I haven't connected that much to. But what I see is that people, especially people who go to on conferences, they have a care. And um, I don't think I've met a single person in Agile who was not willing to support you in one way or another, whatever means they had. Uh, uh, and I remember like in the beginning when I met some of my heroes, uh, like Linda Rising, who's on this list as well, is my ultimate hero. And meeting someone that I admire that much, who actually not only kind of took the time to speak with me, but actually looked and seemed interested in what I did. And that's what I feel in this community is that we have a great interest in each other as well and learning from each other. Um, and um, when I see new people coming in, I see a lot of people stepping up and kind of going like, how can we help you? Um, and it's, it's difficult sometimes when you come into a community that has been existing for a long time. We just had the tent coach camp uh, in Germany and how do you talk to the people you already know 
without excluding the new ones. Um, and that's something we're still struggling with a bit, you know, making sure that everyone feels welcome. Um, part of what, what I do as an organizer of that, so now I'm, I'm organizing the German Agile Coach Camp. And part of what I do is to um, explicitly say this. This is a place where you're well welcome. This is a place where we value um, all thoughts. And my co-organizer Armin talks about, you know, we need new thoughts so that we don't grow stale. Uh, and I talk about this is a place where you can practice to say no, but it's also a place where we take care of each other. And that's a clear expectation. Uh, and that's what I also see in our communities. We care for each other. Um, and um, there's not, like, nobody tells you it's a stupid question. Uh, you can do an open space on, I have no clue what this is. Um, I would love to know more. I know that some of you have tried this out. Is there anyone who could help me? Um, I've tried this really, you know, I see this game and I never tried it before. Would anyone like to play it with me to see if we can use it in a, in a retrospective, for instance? So I see this openness in the community. Um, even, uh, and even when we are not in the same room, I mean, I'm on Twitter a lot. And for those who follow me, I'm on Twitter a lot. <laughs> um, so uh, I usually warn people. Um, but people like Ron Jeffries, who signed the Agile Manifesto, I never met the guy. Uh, and yet we have amazing conversations on Twitter. When my uh, cousin graduated computer science, I asked him if he would um, sign his book for me if I bought it. Um, and he did. And not only did he do that, he sent two original drawings from the book, one for me and one for my cousin. And this is a person that I never met. We only talk on Twitter. Um, and I see this all the time. I see people, you reach out, you ask questions, people help you. Um, but that's also something we need to get better at. I mean, that's one thing that I am still struggling with is asking for help. Uh, especially asking for help if I could do it myself, but it would take longer. Um, or the result would not be as good. And I think that um, that is something I try to help other people do. And I try to help myself practicing to not only accept help, but also ask for help. It's easier to help than to ask for help, I think. It is, it is. And I think part of it is if we look around our culture, if you look at Facebook, for instance, we have so many pretty pictures. We have all, uh, at the moment, like all our kids are graduating and we make amazing food and we do gym. So a lot of what we see around us is perfection. And if we need to ask for help, we are not perfect anymore. And all of a sudden we become vulnerable. And I think that we don't realize that we need to be vulnerable to actually live our lives to the fullest. We need to be all of who we are, even though it's not always good. I mean, we all have days where things are not good. Um, and when I talk to people about these things, I use my favorite quote from Brené Brown, where she says, you are perfect with all your imperfections. And this is such a powerful quote because we are all perfect. We might do things that are wrong and we can change our behavior, but who we are is always okay. Um, even if we've been told different, even if we might need to work on this. Um, and, and also that, that's also one of the reasons I tell my story of how I became who I am is because what I see that if I had gotten the support earlier, maybe I could have gotten there earlier if I had known that it was okay to be me. But then on the other hand, we are who we are because of what happened. So you never know. Um, and I have a voice and I have a privilege. Um, a lot of people talk about stuff that happens to women in the industry and we still have a huge problem with that. But I'm still white. I still have privilege because I'm white. I still have privilege because I'm straight and I'm cis, which means that I can use that privilege to help others. Um, I often quote P.P. Longstocking um, because he says, if you are very strong, you have to be very nice. Um, and this doesn't sound as good as with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, but like you said, we, as agile coaches, we come out, we talk to people and we help people. Um, but the other part of it is we have great power in doing that. 
we might have one-on-ones, we might coach people, we speak at a conference. Um, we can, for instance, choose and say, you know what? Uh, I'm looking at, at the, all the speakers at this conference and I don't see any black people. I don't see any Hispanic people, I don't see any Asian people. Um, what about we take care of that um, and, and bring in some more? And if we are in a workplace, we can invite people in saying, you know what? I know Leah, she's really good at it. Why don't we bring her into the meeting um, and help doing that? And those of us who, I was gonna say have survived, those of us who've grown to have the courage to speak up. If someone brings someone down, speak up. It's not okay. Ill behavior is not okay. And by speaking up and by helping others and talking about the positive things, we can help elevate people. And I see that as part of my journey as well, to help people grow, to help young women see that, yes, you can have a career and be a woman, to help young men see it's okay to have feelings. Yes, boys do cry. And um, unless we empower men to be able to have feelings, they're going to break down. Just as well as we need empower, to empower women to be able to step up or empower non-binary people to be because that's a big problem today i just saw uh, the prince um prince william who said yes i would be a little bit sad if any of my kids were gay or any lgbtq because of the way they will be treated not because of what they are but because of the way they will be treated and we need to change that as well and i think as agile coaches of course we shouldn't just talk about politics which is a sort of is <laughs> but i want to help people feel better about what they do not just because it's the right thing to do but it also helps our workplace because if we don't need to spend time fighting all these things and putting on a facade we can actually help each other we can create better products we can look at changing the world with the products that we make but we can't do that if we spend all our energy trying to fit in and trying to be who we are not. I come from lean, working in healthcare. So I've always expressed it as first do no harm. So before you make a recommendation as an adult coach, think about the context in which you are, the organization, the people. Try to honor what's already there and build upon that. And, and be just very aware that your words and actions can do a lot of harm or a lot of good and be intentional. Yeah about what you want. It, I think it sounds like for you and for me, Agile has given us a platform to be our authentic self and then apply that whole self to the people around us. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So you've touched a little bit on your advice for the next generation. Self-acceptance is incredibly important and you've expressed that beautifully. Is there something that all of us can do to make this a little bit less harder for the next generation? I think just, just looking out to see um, if there's anyone you can help. Um, and also look out if there's anyone who can help you. Um, I'm still waiting to figure out how I can watch the documentary about uh, Mr. Rogers, but he said there's always help us around you. Um, and if you look out for these things, we can find helpers around us who can help elevate us. Maybe if there's a woman you, you admire, or a man for that matter, or whatever, if there's someone you admire and saying, you know what, this is interesting, maybe send an email to that person. I recently made, met, met up with a woman in Stockholm who had written to me, my coach thinks that I should contact you because we work in the same area. Um, but I just started out. And I'm like, well, I have nothing to do that evening anyway. Let's meet up. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for things because people cannot read minds and you won't get unless you ask. But also know that it's okay to get a no. And then practice taking care of yourself, being vulnerable and saying no to things. The hard part comes when you start saying no to things that you really love. Uh, as we both just talked about, we would love to go to play for Agile North America but we also know it wouldn't be good for us because there would be too much traveling involved. There would be, it would just doesn't fit this year. And that is terrible because it's an amazing event, but it's also 
something that we need to do because we want to go to the events the next 10 years. I think the last part about what you said is, I think I find it easier to say no to people that I don't know, but the people I like and respect, yes. it's a lot harder to say no to them. Yeah. And, and I, I always say that, like, I talk about courage. I talk about saying no. And I say it's a little bit like running. You never go out the first day and do a marathon. You could agree with one of your friends and say, you know what? I would like to practice saying no. Will you help me with this so that, that I can practice saying no with you? Um, same with courage. Same with speaking in public. Whatever it is. Find someone who can help you. Take tiny steps. Learn something. And then remember to rest. That's one of the best pieces of advice I think I've heard. Uh, I was frustrated about a year ago that I wasn't getting time to read books as often as I used to. So a friend and I made a deal for every book that I read, he had to write a blog post and share it publicly because he was very <laughs> reluctant to go public. Yeah. But the thing is, it worked for us both. It's just accountability, having somebody who you can check in with and a bit of competition yeah. And exactly. And I think that we often talk about accountability as something bad. Uh, but I think accountability as bad is because it's implemented wrong. If you push accountability on someone, it's bad. If you agree on accountability, as you would do, for instance, in every team, taking that responsibility and being accountable to each other, accountability is actually a good thing. It's a motivator. And it's also what helps us build good relationships. And I think accountability is also about self-care. Yeah. Because you can't help other people if you aren't first taking care of yourself and being the best person that you can be. Yeah, exactly. And you have the oxygen mask on yourself first. Yes, and I think that's one of those socialization things. Um, so I grew up in the Middle East. So there's definitely a context of your priority as a girl or a woman is to take care of everybody else first. Yeah. And it took a long time to internalize or to not internalize that message and be able to say, hold on, I need to do this for me. That's just as important as what I'm doing for other people. Yeah. And I still struggle with it on my bad days. I mean, I will still go where I will. If I'm totally drained, I cannot take care of myself because that is the point where I cannot say no. And if somebody's really suffering around me and I know I can help them by listening and caring, I really, really struggle with saying no, and mostly I won't. How do you balance the I can help, I should help versus, hold on, I actually have to do this thing for myself? Has that been a challenge you faced? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's a reason I have a good talk on stress and depression. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes, I struggle with it a lot. I know what I need to do, and yet if people around me need help with anything like like you know being listened to support stuff like that where i know that not a lot of people are very good at this yes i find it hard to say no um also because for instance i helped some men open up and speak about their feelings something they hadn't done for more than 40 years and if they ask me for help i don't want to go there it's just like you know what i need time to myself right now uh, because I know they might not talk to anyone again the next 40 years. Um, so yes, I'm struggling with that. I am practicing. Um, and that's also part of why I have been taking time off. Also to do stuff that is important but not urgent. Uh, and that's another advice. If you have small things that bother you, go see a doctor. My snoring was really bad. And it turns out I have sleep apnea. And about once a minute, I do not breathe during the night for 10 to 30 seconds. And I was like, I had no clue. It was just one of these things like, okay, I have this list of things I should get checked. And now I've been sleeping with a, with a CPAP machine for a month. And it's crazy how much difference it makes. My blood pressure is already starting to get lower. Um, but I would never have done this if I did not take the things that were important but not urgent. So even just taking physically care of ourselves is something that you need to do as well as mentally. Marsha Schenk, one of our other guests in this series, talked about the importance of connecting our physicality to ourselves, like inhabiting our body and recognizing that the whole thing works together. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for this amazing conversation. It, it was, it was fun. Your advice is not only incredibly powerful, but it's presented in a way that, like, of course this is important. Of course I should do this. So hopefully that will serve as a message for all of the listeners and viewers who can share your journey with you. Thank you. It was my pleasure.